<laughs> I feel like we have a good yeah, jumping off yeah. point. Okay. Mr. Comfort to be a, to be a, oh, to be a, oh, honestly. Do you want this in kilometers or miles? <laughs> Fuck if I care. <laughs> 24,901 miles. Let's do some investigative journalism. Okay, well, we gotta write this down. Um, yeah. Can you get a post it or, you know, something? Stick that up there. Stick that up there. We're just gathering evidence yep. right now. We're yep. gathering we're just, evidence. We're just state. asking questions. <laughs> we're just looking around. Nothing to see. Here, Nothing folks. to see. <laughs> We can see a difference in structure here. We clearly have some sort of pyramid cap on it, which is likely made of a different material that yeah. suits my interests. Let me ask you this. If you were to place an antenna anywhere in a pyramid, I mean, being a rational kind of guy, I'd put it the highest point. And what's the highest point of a pyramid? <laughs> but that's not what Tesla was referring to. So then I, I thought, out of respect for him, what I should do is give him my most informed critical analysis that I can. In my field, you come up with an idea. I mean, being a rational kind of guy, I'd put it the highest point. You present it either at a conference or you- About pseudo-archaeology and pseudoscience a lot. Because God knows these videos are a dime a dozen. Pseudoscience pipeline. Pipeline that the algorithm of these apps literally encourages. Cap. No way. Bull What's going on, man? Is this? It's fucking job security. The nice thing about what I do for a living is that as long as there is stupid people, I can pay my fucking mortgage. To your colleagues. It is their duty to alert you of things about your ideas that are either misguided or wrong. Let me ask you this. If you were to place an antenna anywhere in a pyramid, I mean, being a rational kind of guy, I'd put it the highest point. And what's the highest point of a pyramid? <laughs> Their job. Not all ideas will turn out to be correct. Most won't be. I mean, being a rational kind of guy, I'd put it the highest point. Having radio waves. <laughs> But to get to that point, you need to know things like Contrary to popular misconception, Nikola Tesla's actual wireless transmission system did not rely on transmitting energy through the air using <laughs> Feelings here. It's about objective reality. So I don't want to assume anything nefarious, but did you just like Butterfly effect be crazy anyway? Come on! That's lame, dude. This fact undermines your claims and assumptions and conclusions. That's how science works. His statement is shown to be false. Just because you do some good stuff doesn't mean everything you ever did is going to be great. What can happen if you're a fan of a subject, let's say, an expert. TikTok conspiracy shills talking about archaeology. Let's call it. It's possible to know enough about that subject to think you're right, but not enough about that subject to know that you're wrong. To be a rational kind of guy, I put it the highest point. To become an expert, you can't just sit in an armchair and say, Hey everybody, I'm here at Bridges Studio with Milo Rossi, Mini Minuteman, and he has something to say to Graham Hancock. Graham, uh, I saw your debate with Flint, and first, I just really want to say my condolences. Um, I, that was a tough one, and I know Flint is a big guy to go up against, and frankly, I know you didn't stand a prayer going into it, so I wanted to offer to you, if you wanted to go up against me, it might be a little easier. I mean, I, you know, he's really got the credentials, and maybe we could do this on something where, you know, you stand a chance. So, you know, let me know, but otherwise, man... Be a rational kind of guy, I put it the highest point. It requires looking through journals. That's what we have learned is the most effective means of establishing that which is objectively true. Nikola Tesla's wireless energy transmission system does not rely on sending energy through the air using radio waves. It sends energy via alternating electric currents or mechanical vibrations through the earth and the conductive dirt and soil. The earth is conductive and also transmits mechanical vibrations. This is what seismology is all about. Add on the bacon bits of the electroseismic effect where mechanical vibrations of the earth rectify into alternating electric currents because the earth itself is piezoelectric or piezoelectric. <laughs> I feel like there's, there's a key ring here. The only problem is we go between like meters and feet when convenient. <laughs> oh my. He proposed a method for the transmission of large amounts of power over vast distances by means of mechanical vibration of the Earth's crust. The source of power is a mechanical or electromechanical device. No way. Measuring units are divisions of the Earth's circumference that are harmonic with the Earth ground in basic wave mechanics and physics. So an electromechanical device bolted to some rocky perturbance imparts power at a resonance frequency of the Earth's layers of stone. They absolutely built the mountain between like meters and feet when convenient. Resonant wavelengths divide the Earth into simple division of meters and feet. It's just a simple 2,500 year old physics here. Which is objectively true. This conspiracy theory has now been gifted from the top 
to the bottom, into the hands of the tinfoil hat wearing conspiracy theorists of TikTok and YouTube. About some big cover up, it's just not an archeological site. So since it's not an archeological site, why would it even occupy the airspace in, you know, archeological communities? I'm not gonna waste my breath. Well, I guess I am gonna waste my breath talking about a pyramid, but I have a reason, God damn it. I don't know why archeologists would waste their breath talking about this when we have actual work to do. I'm glad I have you doing this with me because the math one is the one that I was not looking forward to. <laughs> That's not true. Uh, I can find no evidence. Of these. I doubt they were archaeologists because every archaeologist who's looked at it has said it's a fucking mountain. Whoa! You know why? Because it's. Of sedimentary rock. There's like layers of stone underneath that are all really loose. So when the mechanical oscillator or electromechanical device bolted to some rocky protuberance, imparting power at a resonance frequency for the transmission of large amounts of power over vast distances by means of mechanical vibrations of the Earth's crust. The source of power is a mechanical oscillator, i.e. pyramid. Either just a set of tuning forks or but it makes a fucking yes, they are all natural pyramid in Antarctica. I know something you don't know. Cap. No way. Vulcan not. Jesus Christ, we need to fund education in this country. You can't get me this fucking riled up looking like this, bro, okay? It's ridiculous. Clearly seem to be created. What is your uh, your, your expert uh, expertise in this field, huh? Every archaeologist will tell you that is definitely just a natural rock, but me, fucking physicist, I know the truth. Oh. What a surprise! Hmm. Just you know, I said that literally just trying to do his own physics research for him. So is that just a a rock that looks like a face? Absolutely, rock that looks like a face. I'm gonna keep chugging Monster Energy drinks and drink and eating fucking McDonald's hamburgers because it's the archaeologists that are lying to us. I wish that my prefrontal cortex was soft enough to genuinely be convinced that archaeologists are the ones we need to be worried about. That's so much more comforting. Like, I really wish this was the biggest problem we faced in the world. Someone should actually tell It's too bad that the government doesn't represent us at all in his Stop it. Get some help. Much to learn. Getting funding and resources, trying to do his own physics research for so that they can learn more things. Or would you rather actively trying to do harm to education in this country? Well, I'm not talking about that, so I guess go between like meters and feet must be the real problem. So this video is a complete fabrication. There is zero actual archaeological evidence that it is a man-made structure. He doesn't actually give any sources for this, obviously. So all he does is just rattle off a bunch of stats about this pyramid. We should give like all of the things in like different units. <laughs> I did a little bit of research for you because I know how much you care about facts. And you know what? That's because people have lived in this valley for fucking ever. That doesn't mean they built the mountain. You're finding artifacts from all different points in time and a part of the world that has been occupied for tens of thousands of years, well, you kind of accidentally outed yourself there, and then just attributing it to the nearby Great Pyramid, and we're gonna check out distances from the Great Pyramid. Why this is important is because of the waves that go through the ground culminate at different points on the Earth in resonant and harmonic fashions. Really simple. But let's check this out. Let's go to Easter Island here. Do you see this? All of the volcanoes across the entirety of Easter Island are all at key distances away from the Great Pyramid. It's really, really weird. Hmm. What a, what a weird thing, isn't that? Oh my God. Now, let's just take a minute and take a look at all these different volcanoes here. See how many of these line up to really key locations away from the Great Pyramid. And we're gonna see all the other locations that line up to this. And before you try and claim, well, this is just the probability of a lot of different locations, I have found more locations around the Earth that line up to this and the Great Pyramid than anyone cares to actually watch. I don't even have time to edit all of it down into videos that's watchable. It just don't. I have turbines to be working on. But I'm tired of being told that this is not a thing and this isn't real and this isn't really simple and can't be proven. And I'm tired of people like Mini Minutemen and Flint Dibble all just ignoring it like it doesn't exist. And they sit there and they attack people like Graham Hancock because it's an easy to de debunk or prove wrong because they can't prove he's wrong, but they can make it look like Graham Hancock doesn't know what he's talking about. It's about time you start picking on someone your own size who can actually defend themselves, who can actually explain real physics, who actually understands this kind of technology instead of you two just running around picking anyone you can it's just easy to disprove or debunk because they don't have the authority in your field like you two do.
Now, pay close attention to that line that was drawn straight from the pyramid circumferentially around the Earth to the Easter Islands. Look what this goes right through the center of. Hmm, what a coincidence, it's Cusco. Oh, what do you know? Do you see the distance Cusco is away from the Great Pyramid? Oh, 12 million meters on the dot. Yeah, the Egyptians didn't have the meter. Right. Oh, that's just that's just a coincidence now. 12 million, exactly. Huh. These people have no idea what they're talking about. Wow, so sounds like this physics research pyramid thing has been working out pretty well. So again, as I said earlier, I am all for finding ways to encourage education in this country. <laughs> <laughs> we can get the math wrong, and people won't know if it's <laughs> part of the bitterness. Um, okay. Crazy, anyway. Come on. Oh, Milo, but you're actively trying to do harm to education our in this country. Milo, but you're, you're coming down on him, you're trying to silence him. Maybe you should have Googled it. Milo, and then you wouldn't have had to make a video where you literally just do his own physics research for him. And so because being a rational kind of guy, I do appreciate the fact that he can actually try and postulate his theories and, you know, actually try and back them up with evidence. <laughs> I don't think his evidence is very good, but at least he's engaging in the scientific method, you know? And now we put it all together. Here's Milo, both smug and raw. I mean, first, we know that there's obviously a connection between the lines of... <laughs> what? Actually, what? Yeah. Uh, hold on. Okay, okay, okay. Walk me through this. Look, no one said doing this was easy. Okay, it's thankless work. If this was easy, he would be doing out this, just like, <laughs> out there willy-nilly, no effort required, just because it's easy. We put it right now. <laughs> this is also where you can tell that archaeology has no background in basic wave mechanics and physics. And just we can take a little step outside. Reignite the, uh, the brain juices. Spirit. I do, I feel like... I don't know. A little fresh air would help. Yeah. Okay. Ridiculous. I think I rest my case. I do think it's very funny though, watching archaeology clearly have one source for all of their information. Just listen to Graham Hancock once. Little me this. Does Graham Hancock look like a fucking physicist to you? No, no it doesn't. I know culture does not demand pyramid. You know, why haven't we built any pyramids? Whoa. Dude, you are asking some powerful questions right now. It's because we can't. The reason we haven't built any pyramids is not because we can't. It would be ridiculously expensive, take up a ton of manpower, because there's just no reason to. Why haven't we? Because it's a matter of, why the fuck would we? No more? We don't need any pyramids for otherwise uh, accoutrement to the pyramids. Our, Our culture does, does not demand, demand pyramid. pyramid. We have no purpose for them anymore. Why don't we extrapolate your logic here a little bit? Go ahead to the other side of South America where the same line from the Great Pyramid to the Easter Island crosses through. What else is on the other side? A big river mouth to be open. Oh, and it's exactly 9 million? Wow! What a coincidence! <laughs> like, how many more coincidences do we need here? Piece of evidence number 36 that, uh, <laughs> has no background in other things we actually need. And as a physicist, my guy. Is not because there's just no reason to. No, no, it, it's a matter of, why the fuck would we? Have acoustic and mechanical vibration dampers and canceling effect temples. It's a matter of damping out all the mechanical vibrations and acoustics that go into the ground. All the things we do, those vibrations will continue to add up and will continue to keep resonating the earth and cause problems. Flynn, I'm really glad you brought this up. You have to understand that I think a big change that we'll probably see in archaeology is slowing down the migraine inducing physics. It's like A, no, because we butterfly effect be crazy. Anyway, come on. That's lame, dude. <laughs> and B, some of these people that promote this kind of pseudo physics, you can actually spot their lies very easily. It's like a crime scene. So we need to then interpret them within our understanding of the larger physics context within which they exist. I believe you have to go through physics. pyramid excavation painstakingly in order to be able to gain as much information of it as possible because I love destroyed on text that it was originally. <laughs> oh yeah, good point. Ooh. <laughs> the Fast Brown Shops Pyramid. It's in Memphis, right? Yeah. It's like Memphis, Egypt? 
I haven't even smoked weed yet. <laughs> I don't need a high bar of entry for this. This is one of my favorite examples of the collective aneurysm that is pseudo-archaeological physics.